The stories in Five Nights at Freddy's are about to get deeply explored as a second part of the movie plans to change everything. There are lots of hints that suggest that fans have yet to see the last of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Matthew Lillard, who plays William, revealed that he signed a contract to appear in three movies based on the franchise. And since one is already out, there's definitely more to come. The director, Emma Tammy, is also eager to have a second part of the movie on screen as she mentioned that many loose ends need to be tied. However, getting a sequel is based on if the current one does well at the box office. Emma said, we're definitely excited to keep making more movies in this world should we be lucky enough to do that. Five Nights at Freddy's is doing well at the box office and has earned over $250 million even though it was done on a $20 million budget. So FNAF 2 is only a matter of when, which would be pretty soon as the SAG AFRA strike is now over. Emma revealed that the first game inspired the first movie and part two will have to follow the second game. Also, with many of the hints and Easter eggs in the movie, there are plenty of ways in which the second movie could go. However, if FNAF 2 were to follow the game, then fans wouldn't be getting a sequel, but a prequel that would show and explain how things were before the deceased kids were stuffed into the animatronics. Towards the end of the movie, Mike resolved that he would leave the past where it belongs and stop trying to find ways to get Garrett back. But then, Vanessa revealed to him that William Afton got rid of the children, including his brother, and stuffed them in the animatronics, which made their ghost possess the characters. So, with this information, Mike would want to know which of the animatronics has his brother in the second part of the movie. In the beginning, Mike came in contact with Balloon Boy, who seemed to have a mind of his own and scared Mike a few times. But then, this FNAF 2 theory suggests that Garrett's ghost could be inside the Balloon Boy, which absolutely makes sense. Many viewers assumed that the balloon boy was one of the easter eggs in the film but mike saw him more than once so it's very likely that his brother's spirit is in there also there's a mid credit scene in the film where balloon boy gets into a taxi the only reason why he would leave the pizzeria could be to look for his brother and sister so there's a lot more coming from this mysterious character in fnaf 2. another crazy reason behind this theory is that mike's nightmare of garrett became even more intense as soon as he started working night shifts at the fazbear and that could be because because he was sleeping in the same place where his brother's spirit had been trapped. So Garrett is still very much present even though he was abducted a long time ago and would definitely be a big part of FNF2. All of the events in FNF1 could get a detailed backstory as well, starting with how the pizzeria came to be. According to the game, William Afton and his friend Henry Emily founded Fred Bear's Family Diner and Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. William was the one responsible for the demise of many children during the time that the Enterprises were still active in the 80s. So the four main animatronics, Foxy, Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica, seen in the movie, were initially built and designed by Henry, and William was the one in charge of the finances and management of the business. During the time that this first location was active, William started having a weird obsession with the Spring Bonnie, a big yellow rabbit that the character wore in the movie. However, the suit has some exoskeleton that could be dangerous if worn, but William found a way to make it work without getting hurt. Children are very much in love with the animatronics, so William wears the yellow rabbit suit to kidnap and get rid of the children in the back room. As Vanessa explained in the film, William would go further to hide their lifeless bodies in the animatronics as it was the only place that the police wouldn't search. Although he was arrested, they never found any evidence, so he ended up walking free, which made the spirits of the children in the animatronics asking for vengeance. All of these events happened in 1985, and FNF 2 will go into detail on how each of the kids were abducted, including Garrett. The children who went missing and were shown in the first film could all have their individual stories told in the prequel because they are still seeking vengeance after many years. Also, the animatronics weren't really suspected to be holding the children's bodies, but there were reports of a foul smell coming from the pizzeria. The smell was so bad that the health department even threatened to have the business closed due to the complaints they got about the terrible odor from the animatronics. So FNAF 2 is going to be even more horrific as many disturbing images and how it all took place will be explored. However, the 85 incident could lead to another flashback where the pizza
pizzeria was once threatened with a shutdown in 83. Over the years, this has been known to be the bite of Kin 83, which may have been confused with the bite of 87, but the movie prequel would shed further light on the timeline, which would help many fans understand better how the events in the game follow one another. So the bite of 83, according to the game, took place at Fred Bear's family diner, where the first design of Fred Bear was present. The victim was Evan, one of William's children, whom the other kids and his brother teased to move closer to the animatronic since he was clearly afraid of Fred Bear. So they all asked Evan to kiss Fred, who shockingly bit Evan's head, which caused his immediate demise. Then, on the following night, Evan was surrounded by all the plushies of the main animatronics, including Fred Bear, who told Evan, you're broken, we are still your friends. Do you still believe that? I'm still here, I will put you back together. So the prequel could explore this story as the reason that the diner failed, which later led to the dreadful situation at the pizzeria. The Bite of 87 is also a very similar story, except that the victim survived, and it's not known which of the animatronics did the biting and who exactly was attacked. However, this bite incident clearly happened before Williams started committing crimes at the pizzeria, which later led to the final shutdown of the business. There's also another fan theory that says Henry Emily, who was Williams' friend and business partner, was also Mike's dad, and that means he's the same person who gave birth to Garrett and Abby. But then it sounds even crazier that William could kidnap his business partner's son and get rid of him. Also, in the film, Williams' motivation to kidnap and execute Garrett wasn't revealed except for the fact that he knew the family well as he remembered that he was Mike's brother before even giving him the security job. So there could be a lot more secrets involving Mike's parents with William, which could be business related or even deeper than that. And FNAF 2 will definitely go through this to reveal why Garrett was taken. In the movie, viewers discover that William's victims possess all of the strange animatronics. However, Cupcake is one of the most violent animatronics in the film, which means an angry and vengeful spirit possesses him. From the game, it's obvious that Chica, who Susie possesses, has some affiliations with Cupcake, but she can't be controlling Cupcake at the same time as Chica, so that means there's individual spirits in the animatronics. But there have been some fan theories saying that Cupcake could be Susie's dog, seeing as Chica always carries her around like a pet. This theory is further explained as a way for William to experiment if an animal could also function in the animatronics the same way the children's ghosts lived on in the others. Also, Cupcake's furious way of attack is similar to that of an angry dog. Hence, this theory is likely true, and FNAF 2 will further explore the real person or animal behind Cupcake and how William got rid of the dog, which will be very uncomfortable for many viewers to watch. There wasn't much left of the pizzeria at the end of the film as the building started to crumble with William's body in the ruin. That clearly means that there might be no building for the animatronics to live in the future of the FNAF franchise, especially in the second film. So in FNAF 2, the animatronics could start moving around the city or even move to Abby's home since they have so much connection with the family already. But then, the reason behind why the building started to fall apart and what it looks like afterward will all be a part of the next film. Vanessa also didn't get a suitable ending that viewers could comfortably look forward to in FNAF 2. Apparently, there are still many unanswered questions concerning why Vanessa didn't make sure her father was arrested since she knew all about his crimes and the details of it. And then, with the fight that happened between her and William, which put her in a coma, Vanessa being alive, depends on what happens next in the second part. But there's a high probability that she will survive. From there, Vanessa would shed light on many unanswered questions and share the reasons why no one could get to William all these years. What do you think of these different ways in which Five Nights at Freddy's 2 could change everything? And which of the lores are you looking forward to in the movie?